Hi Scorpio, welcome to your month ahead tarot scope with me Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. I would be eternally grateful for it. If you are already a continued subby, thank you so much for all of your support. It truly means the world. If you would like to book a personal tarot reading with me, get a personal video or even a personal written reading, you can do so on my website, which is in the description. But for those of you that don't want to check, it is www.radiantreality.com. Radiant is spelled R-E-Y, not R-A-D. So with all of that out of the way, I would like to bless all of my decks with all forms of love, like peace, prosperity and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So let's see what October 2018 has in store for you. So your actions and your interactions with the world at large, you get the full card. New places, new people, on to new things. October is the last month where you have Jupiter in your sign. And it kind of is it's apt actually, because when the full card comes in, this brings people places and events into our life, into our vernacular that we just haven't known before. So when you get the full card as your actions and your interactions, it's kind of saying two things. One, whatever response, whatever uh, situation you find yourself in, whatever experience you find yourself having, um, if you are presented with a choice between, you know, the past and the future in some way, shape or form, as often happens with the, the full card, it it beckons the new thing. It beckons the new person. The full card always, always pre preempts because it's kind of like Uranus. So it gives you this energy of things completely changing. When you have the full card to show up, especially in your actions and your interactions, you'll be interacting with new people. You will be asked or, you know, not forced, but you know what I mean. You will be pushed into, excuse me, excuse me into having to go somewhere else, somewhere that you haven't been before. The other thing about the full card, you see the little white doggy? This is about trusting your instincts. Um, you know, and when you get the full card, it actually says you can take calculated risks this month. You know, you have that blessing behind you. You have the energy enough is surrounding you in order for you to, to take that moment, you know, to take a moment and say, right, okay, what am I gonna do? You know, what do for some people take a parachute jump or you know whatever it is it's about a calculated risk uh, when you get the full card it asks you to shake things up for yourself or have them shaken up for you um, but it tends to as i said it always brings you new people new events new places um, you know it's absolutely new events and it's very often things that we can't know or can't anticipate and the reason we can't know them or can't anticipate them one is because zero represents pure potential. So it could be literally anything under the sun. And two, what I've found with the full card as an experience, it tends to bring you things that you have no previous history on. And the reason I say that is because if you've got preconditioning and pre-programming to a specific event, you will act from that place. So when the full card shows up, it allows you, it, it basically says to you, who are you right this second, right now, that's who's gonna have to respond to the event that is taking place at this moment in time. Because it usually brings you someone that makes you think outside the box. It usually brings you an experience that you have no, um, no prior conditioning or, or you know pattern or, pro, or program or whatever to read from. So it makes you kind of say, right, well, this is who I am now and this is how I'm gonna respond to it. And that's not to say that it's wrong or right, it just is, it asks you to respond. And in that way as well, actually, it reveals a part of yourself to you, you know, by, by saying, who are you now? And you've got to respond to this that you've never had to deal with before. You know, so often it's a very good thing, um, you know, but sometimes it's, it's not a, a beneficial thing. Um, but um, your response is what's important. That's life kind of having a look and saying, right, where are you at right now? Money and materials, oh, beautiful, Queen of Pentacles. Um, it looks like a lot of you are meeting somebody this month that is hardworking, smart, very grounded, very practical in her approach, very Earth Mother type. Um, and the reason I say that, because the Queen of Pentacles is an Earth sign female, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. And this person has all of the traits that I mentioned, but they're slow, steady, dependable, knows how to budget, knows how to really work on things. 
I kind of feel like, so your money and your materials, in terms, let's start there. Your money and your materials look good this month because this card is about increasing what you can get from what you have. It's about making smart investments that become something, you know, really prosperous. It's about being able to work out, um, you know, how can I take my five grand and turn it into 500 grand? You know, it's, it's that kind of energy as an experience. As a person, this is the sort of person coming into your life that will be, will enable you to make those kind of decisions and kind of moves. Now, with the full card there, this suggests that there is some speculation about this. You are gonna have to take some calculated risks. You're gonna have to, and you know, the thing is, the calculated risk comes from the pairing. It's interesting that I was saying about calculated risks as well, because the full card is a measured risk. You know, it's, it's about doing the risk assessment, I guess, as well. Um, you know, and these two together, it's basically saying, right, how can I take this and turn it into that? And that's really, really exciting. The other thing is, like I said, this person is unknown to you as yet. This person will show up in the month of October. Like I said, the full card always brings you something new, something that you don't know. And this is an earth sign female, or it could be somebody that has that earth mother, earth goddess type energy about her. But you don't know this person. They will make themselves known to you in this month of October. Um, the other thing about this that I want to say is the, the Queen of Pentacles is deeply giving. Uh, so whatever it is that you're blessed with this month, I would be sure to, to find some way of giving back to, whether it's to society, whether it's to a specific person, you know, is, is totally up to you. You get to choose, but um, yeah, I would, you know, because the full card has links to Aquarius as well, which kind of makes me wonder about, you know, some sort of charity. Like if, if you get a massive blessing, you know, drop a fiver to a local homeless shelter or something like that, anything like that. So your communications this month, seven of wands, it's kind of like you're defending your viewpoint. The interesting thing that I find here is, I almost feel like your um, association to a specific person, probably this new person that's coming in, is gonna come under fire, it's gonna come under scrutiny. And maybe a lot of people, you know, personal and professional will be like, mm, okay, I'm not sure I agree with that pairing or whatever. It's not down to them. You know, when you get the seven of wands, it's about defending your viewpoint and standing up for where you're at. It's about saying, well, no, this is what I'm doing and, and I choose to have this person in my life and I choose to do what I'm doing with them and that's my choice. Uh, you know, your communications is, is you speaking to people, interacting with people at a communicational level and the Seven of Wands sees you defending that. But it usually, when you get the Seven of Wands, it's about defending your viewpoint but having the moral high ground. So you are in the right on this. That doesn't, however, give you the right to become a tyrant. Um, you know, make of that what you will. I will leave that up to you, Scorpio. <laughs> okay, so your heart and your half this month. Uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, uh, you know, familial ties, friendship ties. Page of Pentacles. It looks to me, because the Page of Pentacles is usually about, a, you know, a personal business or something that you do in a small way that you, you know, that you enjoy, but ends up becoming lucrative. And your heart and your half is about your closest relationships. For those of you that are partnered, um, it looks like you're working details out on how you can go into business together. Or if there is, you know, there is any way that you can go into business together. For those of you that are single, it kind of sees you, whoever it is that, that pushes your buttons um, and pushes you to work harder is going to be the type of person that you're attracted to this month. Um, here goes the itchy nose with the Scorpio thing again. <laughs> um, yeah, for those of you that are single and certainly for those of you that are partnered, um, you know, this looks like whether you're figuring out, can you tie business and pleasure together? Um, you know, whether you're single, whether you're partnered, you know, this is the question that you're asking. Well, we've often said business and pleasure don't mix, but sometimes they do. Um, if you are partnered, expect a few heated debates on whether this can work or not. Uh, if you are single, um, you know, and, and <laughs> you happen to, to find somebody at work attractive and all the rest of it, just err on the side of caution because you might be met with some resistance um, by either your peers or theirs um, or your collective peers. And, uh, you know, that could see you kind of both sort of spending, as the 
saying goes, spending more time defending your relationship than actually having one, um, which is never a, a, an enjoyable experience, let's be honest. So, first week of October, that card seems to want to pop out. The Magician card, beautiful, right underneath the fall. This is interesting because it kind of says that the divine blessing is shining down on you and you can turn the divine blessing into whatever it is you choose this week. The Magician card is always about powerful communication, but it's also about mastering magic. It's also about creating, you know, manifesting the things that you truly desire. Um, the, with the fall card there, this is like the heavens giving you its blessing and saying, right, I'm gonna give you the clay and then the first week of October, it's like, I'm gonna give you the clay and you can shape it into whatever you choose. These kind of blessings very rarely come twice, uh, you know, if in a lifetime. Um, so it looks like this is a really powerful month for you. It's suddenly taken on a much bigger, uh, bigger significance and experience here. So Scorpio, be really wise this month about how you choose to use your power and what you choose to create in this world. Second week of October, Moon card. This has also been very active this month. Um, underneath the, the Queen of Pentacles, in terms of your money and your finances, when it starts to build and starts to pour in, don't be willy-nilly with it, don't waste it. Um, and also, like I said, you know, think about doing something that is charitable, think about something that you might have promised somebody in the past and never delivered on, you know, all of that kind of energy, think about it. Um, and go over it. The second week of October, it's kind of asking you to get in touch with your instincts, um, you know, especially when it comes to your money and your materials. And also, this person might be suggesting something that on the surface you're like, Pruh! wouldn't touch that with a barge pole. Do some digging with your intuition and see what comes up because the chances are you might actually find that what they're offering is something really powerful. Um, third week of October get the full card look at that so you've got a double hit of this surprise energy there's a surprise coming in in the third week of October um, it may well see you have to having to really act quickly and move quickly on your feet in order to do so um, again one thing with this is I kind of feel that with your actions and your overall like I said it's about changing things and it's bringing you somebody completely new whereas this full card I kind of feel like it brings you another event there'll be two specific events that come but the second event, especially in the third week of October, it almost feels like this has a, it's got a feel of the past to it. It's got a feel of something that you might have already experienced. And you're gonna to have to be really discerning about which path you take. When you get the full card, it always asks you to take the new path, to take the road less traveled. Fourth week of October, strength card. I think this is like the third time this, this card has come up for the fourth week for, you know, for three different signs. Um, which is really interesting. So um, strength card in the fourth week is basically saying, listen to your heart, follow your gut, follow your intuition in terms of what your heart is telling you is right. If you do find yourself feeling drawn to somebody and working with them on um, you know, anything in terms of business, then open yourself up to it. Uh, for those of you that do find yourself under scrutiny, the fourth week is going to see you having to make a decision. Um, and that decision, it's almost like you might have to say to somebody, look, you know what, I don't agree with that or I'm, I'm not into it or whatever. Um, or you could be presenting somebody, especially for those of you that are single, uh, to a family or to a family member and them just being like, well, actually, I don't approve. And this is asking you to tap into your own strength and courage to say, well, look, you know what? Thank you for your honesty, but I'm still gonna travel down the path that I choose to travel down. Um, certainly a very interesting month for you, Scorpio. It's not gonna be dull to say the least. Your key to the month. Wow. You get the full card again. Um, there are things this month that you will not be able to anticipate. There are experience sh experiences shaping up in your world, in your life, in your personal arena, uh, you know, that you cannot anticipate. For some of you, there are big changes ahead. For some of you, there are anticipated changes ahead. But what I can definitely guarantee you is once the month of October is done, uh, Scorpio, you will know that you have been through it. Um, 
I don't necessarily see anything difficult here, but I do, I do feel you, that you'll have some, especially in your personal relationships. For those of you that have daughters, something kind of, it almost feels like something centers around that, whether you're presenting a partner to a daughter, whether a daughter's presenting a partner to you and you don't approve or they don't approve, it's gonna be something that you have to work through. Um, but what I can say is that all of you in some way, shape or form are coming into contact with somebody that is gonna shake things up for you. And I actually feel like this is a good thing. Even at the moments that it gets challenging, I believe that somebody is coming in that is gonna rock your world. Um, and that's a great thing, ultimately. I wish you an abundance of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance itself. Have an amazing week, uh, have an amazing month and I will see you very soon for more videos. Take care. Let me know how this shapes up for you as well in the comments. I'm really intrigued.